Hello, it's Nicolette, and today I'm talking about how you can best prepare for the TCF, the Test de Connaissance du Français. I personally took this test last year, and I learned a lot of valuable things from preparing for the test and from taking the test itself. So I wanted to share some of that information to help you get the best score possible. All right, you ready? Let's go. TCF is a way to demonstrate your level of fluency in French. The possible scores range from an A1, being the lowest score, to a C2, being the highest. People take this test for a variety of reasons, uh, the most common probably being applying for a French university or a language program such as TAPIF. I believe TAPIF and then most university programs require that you get a score of B2 or higher. There are some universities that require you to get a C1 level. Those are usually degree programs that involve a lot of writing in French. The first thing you want to do is figure out what is that score that you need to get. Do you need to get a B2? Do you need to get a C1? Figure that out and then also figure out what level you are currently at. TV Saint Mon has an awesome test that you can take. It's pretty quick to figure out your level. I also recommend using the site to take TCF practice tests in general. They have so many practice tests. They even have a time test option so that you can get comfortable with answering all the questions within the allotted time period. Seriously, if you only do one thing to prepare, this is the thing to do. Take lots of practice tests. If you take the practice test and you are not at the level you need to be at, don't worry. That's why you're gonna prepare for this test. That's why you're gonna study for this test. Just as a reference, I currently am a C1 level in French. When I was preparing for this exam, I was not at that level. I was a B1 and probably an A2 in listening comprehension. In the course of one to two months of prep, I was able to jump from a B1 to a high B2, and I even scored a C1 in one of the sections. So putting in the preparation can really get you to jump a full level, if not two levels. So don't be discouraged if you take that practice test and are far away from the level that you need to score. The TSAF has three required sections. That includes listening comprehension, language structure, and reading comprehension. There are also two optional sections, which are the oral or speaking portion and the written portion. The first part of the test that you'll take is listening comprehension. So this section, like all the other mandatory sections, is multiple choice and the questions are ordered from the easiest to the most difficult. You're gonna be hearing an audio clip played for each question and they will not repeat the audio clip. You only get to hear it once, so make sure you're paying attention. If you need to jot down little notes on a scratch piece of paper, go for it. That's what I was doing, especially when it got to the more lengthy audio clips. After you hear the audio clip, you will need to answer the multiple choice question. Usually this is something like, what is the best response to this? Or if it's a longer audio clip, they'll ask you questions about the information that you heard. It's gonna be different accents. There's gonna be like a Parisian accent and a Southern accent. It might be from a radio show or a news clip. There's really gonna be a wide variety because they are also testing to make sure that you can understand people who speak with different accents, people who speak at different speeds. The best way I would say to prepare for this is to make sure you're really listening to a variety of audio sources. Don't just listen to that one French YouTuber or that one French podcast because you need to branch out and be familiar with understanding and listening to people who speak at different speeds and at different accents. My favorite app for listening comprehension is the Radio France app. This app allows you to have access to live radio programs in French, as well as pre-recorded episodes and podcasts. If you want more detailed tips on how to prepare for listening comprehension, you can check out this video. The next portion of the test is language structure. So this covers things like grammar and overall sentence structure. So questions in this section are also multiple choice, but it's gonna involve things like which is the correct verb tense or which is the correct word to put in this blank. For this section, it's really important that you have an understanding of basic grammar concepts. You wanna know different verb tenses, such as the present tense, the past tense, imparfait, passé composé, 
conditional, subjunctive for the higher levels, or at least just be able to recognize what verbs in the subjunctive look like. So you could pick them out in the multiple choice lineup. I also suggest that you brush up on grammar concepts such as prepositions, um, direct objects, things like that. This personally is my favorite grammar book for French. I know I have a favorite grammar book. Um, I'm a nerd. So this is the complete French grammar book from Practice Makes Perfect. It really has simple, clear explanations of so many different grammar concepts. It has a lot of helpful tables and guides in the back. Definitely recommend getting this book. It also has a lot of helpful practice exercises and an answer key in the back. So after you read through a chapter, you can answer the questions and see if you understood it. Next up is the reading comprehension section. And it's what it sounds like. You read something and then you answer questions to make sure you understood it. So at the more basic beginning questions, they might show you a sign in a shop window and say, if I went to this store at 9 a.m. on a Saturday, would they be open? So that's seeing if you can read, you know, the days of the week and the different hours and figure out if it's open or closed. At the higher level, you're gonna be reading a couple short paragraphs and answering multiple questions about it that check if you understood the overall meaning of the text um, and you can read more macro information about it. Maybe this is gonna be obvious, but the best way to prepare for this section is to read more French stuff. So while I was preparing for the test, what I would do is every morning I would log on to Le Monde, which is a French newspaper. I'd go on their website and I would read all of the major headlines. And then I would read one article in depth. And I made sure that when I was reading it, I didn't look up any words because you're not gonna be able to have the internet or a dictionary with you when you're doing this reading comprehension section. So I would read the article and see if I could understand in general what the article was talking about. Then I would go back and look up certain words that I didn't know or were unfamiliar with or maybe had seen a lot and didn't know. That really helped me check if I could read something and understand it, as well as gain new vocabulary. The reason that reading French news sources is super helpful is because that's where the test makers of this test are pulling information from, are pulling articles from to make these questions. So the vocabulary that you're going to come across in the news is the type of vocabulary that's going to be most common on this test. Reading books in French is also a fantastic way to prepare for this section. If you need recommendations based on your current French level, I would check out this video. Okay, now for the two optional sections. The written section is what it sounds like. It's uh, you writing. So this is the part of the test that is not multiple choice. You are gonna have three separate writing prompts and it's essentially divided into kind of an A level prompt, a B level prompt, and a C level prompt. And you do have to do them in order. Do not start with the third one or the second one. Start with the first one, go to the second, and then go to the third because that helps them grade what you've written. So in the first kind of A level question, they're going to be asking you to write something really quick and simple, probably three to four sentences total. For example, when I took this test, I needed to respond to an email from a friend explaining how to buy a metro ticket. So I told him where to get it, the price of the ticket, and that was pretty much it. This is also kind of testing if you know whether you should be using the to form or the vu form for something. So. The context was it was an email to a close friend, so I used the to form. The next one is gonna be something a little more involved. So that's gonna be writing, you know, a probably like a paragraph. Um, for mine, I had to write about someone who I knew who had just achieved something and why that was inspiring to me. Pro tip, it doesn't have to be truthful. Like, this is just checking your writing skills. So don't sit there for like 10 minutes trying to think of something in your real life. Make something up, that's okay. The third and final section is the most advanced question. And this is usually something where you have to read and respond to 
an article um, and state your opinion on it. My overall tips for the writing section are keep it simple. This is not a time to try out fancy vocabulary, fancy sentence structures that will not impress the person grading this, especially if you do it incorrectly. It's more important that your spelling is correct, your grammar is correct, how you are structuring a sentence is correct, and not that you show off that you can use these really long French words with really confusing sentence structures. Especially for the second and third questions, I would suggest memorizing a couple connector words, so words that you can link ideas with, start a paragraph with, conclude a thought with. I will put a couple on screen for some ideas. Also just know that if it is on a computer and it most likely is, I think pretty much all these tests are now, there's gonna be like a little box where you can add accent marks. So that's just adds a level of stress and time. So just be prepared for that ahead of time and know that you're probably not gonna be able to write novels for all of these because there's a lot of factors. The final section is the speaking portion. And that's right, it involves speaking to a actual live human. The beginning of it is gonna be pretty simple, straightforward. It involves likely introducing yourself, saying who you are, and there's gonna be some really basic, simple kind of A-level questions. Then the person is gonna slowly kind of go into more advanced questions. I think a lot of people get hung up on their accent in this section. Um, they get worried that they're not pronouncing words correctly but really don't worry about your accent. They are not grading your accent. They don't expect you to have perfect pronunciation of words. Really, they wanna make sure that you're able to be understood by a French person. Also, big tip is if you don't understand something they're asking you, ask them to repeat the question in French. This shows that you are able to really engage with the person you're talking with and ask for help if you need it. So that won't dock you points if you say something like Pouvez-vous répéter la question, s'il vous plaît? That's actually going to show that you have initiative when speaking French and that you're able to use the language in order to ask for help and assistance. Kind of later, higher level questions are going to be probably like a role-playing type of scenario. They may ask you to pretend you're phoning a company, to ask for something specific, to make a reservation. The only way to prepare for this section is to speak French. I know that can be really scary for a lot of people, and a lot of people avoid practicing spoken French, but you cannot be afraid of that if you want to get a good score on this section. I highly recommend finding people to practice French with, so whether that is a meetup group or a group language class, I have been loving taking conversational group classes with Novisa. They are awesome and really affordable. It's a great way to every week just have a conversation in French and practice expressing my opinion in French. If meetups or group classes kind of scare you, maybe you just want a one-on-one -on -one thing, you can find a tutor or you can find a language buddy. Uh, finding a pen pal, especially if they are a native French speaker, is a fantastic way to practice both written and spoken French. If you want more information about how to find a language partner or a pen pal, check out this video. And lastly, just a few overall tips for taking this test. Number one, I would say pace yourself. Make sure you're keeping an eye on the clock. Usually if you're taking it on the computer, it'll show how much time you have left in a section. Don't get hung up on one question because you really don't have a lot of time to, you know, dedicate like two, three minutes for a single question because you're not going to be able to get to all the other ones. So if you're really stumped on a question, just put like a big little star or X by it and know that you can go back to that one later, but don't get hung up on it. Keep moving forward. And the other tip is don't stress. I know that taking tests can be really stressful, um, but try your best to, you know, get a good night's sleep before, eat a good breakfast, and just go in there calm, confident, and really the thing about this test is you can't necessarily fail. This is not a pass-fail test. It just gives you a score to show where you're at in your French fluency. And you know what? If you take the test and you don't get the score that you need, 
you can take it again. So don't stress out. It's not the end of the world. Um, it's a test. <laughs> so just go in there calm, cool, collected, and confident that you can do this. If you still have questions about the TIS AF that I didn't answer in this video, feel free to add them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching and bon chance. Au revoir.